Welcome to the Bold Money Revolution podcast. This is your source for straight talking, no fluff, business and high performance conversations that add real depth and value to the way bold leaders live, work and thrive. I'm your host, Tara Newman. I'm here to show you how to optimize your performance as a leader so that you can grow a business that is profit rich, efficient, and allows you to generate real tangible wealth for yourself and others. We are here to help you lead with your values, to perform without overwhelm and burnout, and to do your most important work in the world. Hey, hey there, bold leaders. Welcome to another episode of the Bold Money Revolution podcast. I am so excited to be here today with Michelle Tubman. She is a current client. She is in our the Bold Profit Academy Plus program. She started out in the Bold Profit Academy program. And I'm here because I want to share her journey with all of you because it is epic. And I was just sharing with Michelle that she actually helped me and flipped something for me in my own mindset that I want to really talk about and share with everyone here today as well. So we're going to be talking about the one thing that that I learned from Michelle that has helped me in my business and flip my mindset. We are going to talk about how Michelle as a busy ER doctor, physician, into COVID times has managed to start and grow a business. So like, how is she doing this? How is she using her time to get the results that she's getting? And then Michelle always has the best insights about her growth. She's a real learner. And what that means is that you can look at at your your mistakes and you can look at your ups and downs and, and take something away that is meaningful and purposeful and then intentionally put that into action going forward. So there's so much here that I think is so important that we share. And so I'm excited to do this. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Very excited to be here. I'm so excited for people to hear what you do. Tell us what you do. Well, as you mentioned, I am an emergency physician by night, right? And then by day, I'm a life and weight loss coach. So I'm really on a mission to teach women that their body and their weight is never their glass ceiling, that they can live the life that they feel that they deserve, the life that they want, regardless of the body that they live in. And when we encompass that belief, the weight just kind of comes off. It's magical to witness. So um, I am super passionate about sharing with women everywhere uh, what that process looks like. Um, I've lived it myself and women need to hear this message. And it's just what fuels my business forward every day. And specifically, who are you talking to? Like, who is your target market? So I know you have some specifics Mm -hmm. nailed down. Yeah. So I target professional women who are in higher levels um, within their, in their profession, um, who are generally in, you know, the 35 to 40, 50, 60 kind of age group, um, and women who have at least 60 pounds to lose. Most of the people who are clients in my business or who listen to my podcast have been dieting for decades um, and have come to this point where they just um, feel stuck um, and trapped in this bigger body that's holding them back from advancing in their careers, getting the love that they want, all of the things. And I, I, what I love about this, and you and I have talked about this, is how you as a physician kind of stand in this really interesting place of really being able to have the credibility and the credentials to speak out in support of overturning this diet culture and some of these fads and and hacks and tactics that women are being just perpetrated with mm-hmm. you know in their in their news feeds and you're able to give this like from an, a place of evidence based mm-hmm. and, and and science but you're also able to speak to the fact that as a physician there are problems in the system 100% yeah Yeah. So I really love that positioning for you. It's so powerful. And I love that it also gives me my side gig inside my side gig is to really work on changing medical culture as well, because Mm -hmm. not only do we approach the treatment of overweight and obesity and even using those labels, you know, wrong causes just irreparable damage to women everywhere, but there's also fat shaming implicit in the Western medical model as well. And 
both of those things need to be addressed. So um, I feel I've positioned myself in this perfect place to help women and to help my colleagues in the medical profession understand um, a little bit better what it actually means um, to be a woman living in an overweight body and the reasons why we got there. Yeah. So important. So important. So I want to just back us up for a second to, okay. So when you let's, let's go here, we're going to go in the middle and then we're going to go back and we're going to go forward. So Michelle joined my program at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. She joined the Bold Profit Academy. And then she booked a call with me a year later because we were promoting the Bold Profit Academy Plus. And I was surprised because Michelle hadn't been coming to our calls. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because for me, as like a program owner, I get one of my mindsets and my concerns as somebody who feels very responsible. And I know that a lot of women feel very responsible for the work they do. They feel very, they care a lot. They feel very committed to the people who they they work with and that they want them to get results. And I, I wonder when I don't see people on calls, you know, if I've somehow not like they've fallen off, if I could have been doing a better job, like, you know, right, we go into this whole narrative around making it about ourselves. So and I think about people when they go, I wonder where so-and-so is. And, and sometimes we reach out and, and things like that. Um, so when Michelle came to this call, I was like, gee, this is really interesting because I hope she's like, I hope she's done well. Like I haven't seen her. Of course, I didn't realize she's, you know, in the trenches of the emergency medical space during a raging pandemic, right? Like makes sense why you might not get to calls. So when she shows up to the call, first of all, she said, I love it. Her husband gifted her the program at the end of 2020. How did that feel to receive that from your, from your husband? Oh, I, it's so good. I mean, I am married to the best man ever. He has been nothing but supportive throughout this whole process. And I joined you before I even had my business. I, had I know. Yeah, right. I had this idea. I wanted to do it. And I didn't know where to start, what to do. Um, I came across you. I liked what you stood for. And before it, like my husband, Rob, came to me with this email that he had registered me um, in this program. So how did he know to register you? Did you tell him? I show him everything. So I, I went through and, you know, this is part of the reason why you didn't see me for the year is I bought all the things. I bought all of the programs, all of the people. When I first got the idea of starting this this business, I got completely overwhelmed by the online space. There are just so many loud voices in there. I didn't know who to listen to. I bought all the loud voices and then I found you. And you're a quieter voice in the online space. But I read your sales page and everything resonated. And I showed my husband every point you made on that page. I had an explanation as to why I felt that was important for me. Um, so he had the the sales page and that's that, you know, that's how he knew. And when I signed up for um, the PLUS program this year, I went back to my husband. I said, do you remember this program you bought me? <laughs> he did. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm signing up for the next step. He's like, I think that's a really good idea because Tara is the only one that you actually ever quote in this. <laughs> so, um, right. So e- even if you are a quiet voice, you are certainly the loudest one in our house. So, so I'm not going to lie. Partners and husbands love me. Like some of them even, even message me on Instagram and it's, I'm like, cool with it. I'm like, listen, if I'm improving home lives everywhere, I'm, I'm really good with that. So yeah. So he, he had bought you that program and you you said to me, you know, he bought me this program and we're going to talk about you making your way through the program, but you were like, I really, you know, was able to build my business off of this and now I'm ready for that next step. So that was such a gift to me to hear that, like, you did well, right? Like in that you were an implementer because that's really what that program is all about is really making sure that people implement. So I want to, I want to back up for a second and I'm curious to know, like, what was it where you were like, I'm going to start my own business? 
what was the, the, the impetus? What was, what's the goal? What's the aspiration there? Well, I think it started because of my own journey, like I'm sure is the case for many business owners, is I struggled with my own weight for decades. I did all the programs. I did the Weight Watchers. I saw my doctor who told me I should do keto and intermittent fasting, which I tried on his advice, destroyed my life, stopped my periods, did a whole bunch of negative things um, because it wasn't right for, for my body. And at the peak of my frustration, I found a coach. Didn't know what the heck a coach was at that time, was super skeptical, but totally changed my my life and the way that I thought about food and my body and all of the things. And I thought women need to know this. Other physicians need to know this. And so when the pandemic first started, um, I'm up in Canada and the messages that were coming out from our government were to not come to the ER unless you were super sick. And so for the first few months of the pandemic, the the ERs were quiet, like in a spooky, you know, sort of way. And I had some time, a little bit of extra time. And I also felt like I needed something positive to focus on because at the Mm. beginning of the pandemic, everything was scary. Like we didn't know what it was, what was going to happen. We had memories of SARS and people were having traumatic, you know, flashbacks to that. And we're like, what's coming? So I felt like I needed something positive to focus on. So I went and got the same training that my coach had. And it was through that process that I realized I love coaching. I like I it fills my soul in a way medicine doesn't do. I need to do this. And so I thought, well, you know what, I guess I have to start a business. That's literally how the thought process went. So yeah. So yeah. you're you're doing important work with what you're doing, but you see a need and an opportunity to do something even more meaningful and mission driven and to have this impact in a greater way. Mm-hmm. That's a, I know that's a big motivation for you. Mm-hmm. What else is, is motivating or interesting to you? And, and <laughs> you're fantastic with the insights. And I think it was you who, who first said to me, one of the first things I think you said to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, was, I don't know much about business. I didn't go to business school. I wasn't taught business. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But I think that thought of, I don't know what to do, stopped me for about five seconds. And then it was like, ooh, this is a challenge. <laughs> like nothing more than a good challenge, right? I mean, you don't, you don't get to be an emergency doctor without thriving on the unknown and on challenges and navigating through all of that. So I think that's a secondary motivator for me. It's like, I want to know what can I do with this? Where can I take it? Like, how can I grow and stretch and learn and be challenged? And all of that's very motivating for me as well. Yeah. What's possible. Mm-hmm, exactly. there, this is a place that, that feels like there's a lot of possibility for you. Yeah, exactly. Does it feel infinite in its possibilities? Yes. Yes, it does. Yep. Right. When you're in control of what's possible, it, it starts to feel like anything's possible. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And I have no problems dreaming. I have, (laughs) I can sit and fantasize for an hour about how this could look five years from now, a decade from now, and, and how it's changing the lives of women across the globe. So it's all very exciting for me to hold on to for sure. All right. All right. So when you started, it was basically like, how do I start? What do I need to know? What, what don't I know? Like, you said you were just buying yeah. things, like looking for, like, how do I, like, it, almost like the struggle was in the not knowing. It, that that was definitely the trap that I fell into. And I thought that the solution was to buy all the things, to buy all the programs, which in some ways helped because it's like, I didn't even know the lingo, right? I would hear warm leads, cold leads, opt-in, funnel, evergreen, pivot, all of these words that like made no, made no sense no to sense. me. Right. And I I felt like I needed the language and then I I needed a first step. Right. And that was the hardest part for me. And then once, once I got going, I quickly realized that having so many courses and buying so many programs was actually slowing me down um, and making the process much less fun for me um, and more overwhelming than it had to be. So I put an end to that. 
What do you think the, there is, you know, what were some of the breakthrough moments that you had last year that took you from no income to income and wanting to kind of step up to the next level of building your business? Oh, Tara, there were so many things. Like I, when I first started, I didn't want to charge anybody any money at all. Like I, I was terrified charging money. Like in my mind, it's like I make good enough income as a physician. I don't need more money. Women need to hear this message is, you know, what I kept hearing. And if I charge for it, then women aren't going to hear it. Um, So I had to get over (laughs) that big hurdle in my own mind that um, it not only was appropriate for me to charge, it was necessary for me to charge for um, the benefit of my business, but also the benefit um, of my clients. So that was a big thing. Second thing I think for me was you know, uh, physicians tend, we were uh, as a group type A personalities, we want to do everything right. We want approval, right? We, we want the A plus grade on everything. And so I really kind of had to accept imperfection and taking steps that were a little bit messy. You know, this is a really big factor for experts. And I love working with experts because you have actual expertise that people want and that's credible and that's easy to build, to create quality programs and build premium pricing around, Mm -hmm. right? And, And to really, and you're there to do the work. And so I love that. And the challenge is exactly what you're saying, right? That there's a lot around having to be right, having to know it all, um, not wanting to look silly or like you don't have all your shit together, needing it to be perfect, being valued or rewarded in the past for those things. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and very much like you said was like, but you didn't know anything about business and why the heck would you, you know? So that's why I love partnering as an expert in business, partnering with other experts because that's the complete picture, mm-hmm. right? And and having that open-mindedness and curiosity and allowing yourself to be a beginner is such a huge step. Huge step and certainly not an easy one um, in the beginning, but I really credit the success of my business for on me being able to do that, to kind of let go of some of the expectations that I had on myself. Also let go, letting go of the fear of being, Um, judged harshly by other physicians for, you know, taking a stand that isn't, isn't mainstream in the medical world as well. So, you know, there, there were a lot of, of things that I just had to say, you know what, I acknowledge that this is there, but I'm moving forward anyway. So a lot of the people that I, this is another truth that I just want to call out that a lot of the people that I work with, I don't want to use the word disruptor. I'm going to use the word differentiation and differentiator are people who have seen a need, an unmet need, an underserved need or population of people because they're willing to go against the grain Mm -hmm. and they're willing to take a stand for something. And at the same time, that behavior is really uncomfortable and requires so much courage to go and speak out against the normative voices. Mm -hmm. But I think the more I do it, the more I know I have to do it, if that makes sense. And Mm -hmm. the the easier it becomes. And it's, it's on all fronts. I have to stand up against the body positivity people because they criticize me for encouraging women to lose weight. And yet I have women who have been traumatized by the body positivity movement because they have very legitimate reasons for, for wanting to, to be a little bit healthier and, and, you know, being a little bit more comfortable in their bodies and they, they need a space, you know, for that. And it's just everywhere there. The weight loss space is huge Mm -hmm. and women have been immersed in diet culture and been the victims of the diet industry for so long that they can't hear, they can't hear outside of that. And I feel like I have to be loud um, so that they can see that there is another way to approach all of this. And so, you know, 
standing up to all of the critics is something that gives me a little bit of excitement now, honestly, because it obviously needs to happen. It needs to be done. I always define bold as not necessarily loud, but being willing to say the things you're unwilling to say, Mm -hmm. being willing to do the things that you feel a little unwilling to do is what's actually bold. I remember another thing you said to me, which I think is very relevant to probably the people listening to this podcast is you realized you had to silence the noise. So true. And there was so much noise to silence, (laughs) so much noise like in the online business space, right? There are very clear messages that, that come out of that space that told me how I was supposed to run my business. Much that like never, diet culture. Right, much like diet culture that never felt right for me, right? And then not knowing like, where do I go if none of this feels right? I mean, the answer was you um, as it turns out, but you know, and then it's, it's also, you know, when I first started, I looked for other weight loss coaches who were doing work similar to mine um, and spent time listening to them, which, you know, on one hand, it was helpful to, you know, to figure out where the space was, but when it came to talking to my people and, you know, writing my content, I couldn't get their voices out of my head. So I even got to a point where I had to to disengage from that too. um, So I could find my, my own voice and my own way of talking about what I offer to the world here. Yeah, that's a real big part of my secret, actually. People are always, you know, curious as to how I think about things. And I don't ever look for inspiration within my within my niche. So, you know, I'm not following, I, I, I'm not really following. I Sometimes things come across my feed or somebody will share something with me. But for the most part, I'm looking in other industries. I'm looking in, in other businesses, way outside of the online space. It's like a favorite place for me to look and hang out. And really to let that fuel my creativity. Well, if this is how they're doing it in e-commerce, like how could we do this in, in service? Yeah. And, and to really kind of look like look outside and, and, and bring and, in things from there. And I actually do the same thing. And I think that's another reason why I love my business so much is that it gives me, I have to be constantly learning. Like it it gives me a reason to go out and and learn more. Like, you know, for example, a lot of women who struggle with weight have a history of trauma in the background. So I have been Mm -hmm. doing lots of work lately on being more trauma informed, um, having a trauma sensitive approach to my programming and my coaching. Um, So I've been spending time in that space and, you know, really enjoying it. So it's been more additive to my work and and not so much distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? So anything else that was like a big shift for you last year that was like an insight or maybe something specific to the Bold Profit Academy that you found, you know, particularly helpful? Mm -hmm. I think, well, there were so, so many things when, when I, I want to say springtime of last year um, was really starting to get rolling. I had a full roster of one-to-one clients at that point. And my business was a disorganized mess because I was, you know, putting out fires, finding solutions to problems as they they came up. And I had no, no plan for the future, no structure, no support in my business. Um, I had zero idea of where my finances were in all of this. And in one of the things you gave me and what the Bold Profit Academy gave me was some structure and a way to think about my business, plan for my business. Um, doing profit first was um, a huge um, deal for me because we could do a whole other you know episode on you know the issues I have around money and things like this. So um, that was um, that was huge. But really, what it was was you gave me a structure on how to think about my business and plan it so that it starts to run a little bit like a like a well oiled machine. And rather you know rather than me just you know figuring things out as I go, but but putting like a backbone, a foundation um, in place for my business and. Also, just your um, the approach of the way you teach and all of the other women that are inside your program. You know, it's it's it's. I feel like we're all on the same page, and we all want to serve our our clients, and we want to do it from this heart based place. 
that feels good for us, right? And I think like that was the important um, piece. And when you teach us the EMS framework, I literally structure my whole life around that framework. Isn't it fantastic? Like to the point where I actually write in my journal every morning, what I'm going to do for my energy today, what I'm going to do for my mindset today. And then like what my top task is in my business and my life. And like, I, 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 so my whole life is, is this framework now. So it changes your nervous system, doesn't it? I believe it does. Yep. I believe it does. There you have it, folks. It's medically approved. My EMS, <laughs> energy mindset and strategy is medically approved. Doctor approved. So I've, it's, it's funny because I, I actually, I talk at the hospital all of the time about my business. And, you know, my colleagues know about you, Tara. And they'll say, my business coach, she teaches this. And so I actually have some physician colleagues who say, what do I have to do for my energy and mind, mindset before I come to work? Which I think is just, you know, mind-blowingly awesome. So you're, you're far reaching Tara more than, you know, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I want to back up to the money thing though, for a second. Cause you're oh. like, Oh, we're going to gloss over this. And I'm like, mm, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so share with me. Uh, so the profit first system is beautiful. And, yes, yes. and I appreciate that you enjoy the structure in the bull profit Academy, because that is one, something that I really appreciate about how that container is created and the and the way the different frameworks and guides and workbooks and, and the implementation pieces are created that you can basically just take them and create your own structure or process within your business based mm-hmm. on those things. Also, your business is supposed to be disorganized, right? Like you were one person, you're starting out, growth is messy. I say this all the time. Mm-hmm. So what concerns did you have around the money piece of running a business? It's, I have this, this belief. I don't know where it comes from that. I don't like money, that money is dirty, that, you know, if I have too much of it, that makes me a dirty person. And it's, I am still, you know, knee deep more than knee deep. I'm like, neck deep in, um, student debt from medical school still. And right. And I, um, I can't even look at my own personal finances and make a plan to solve that problem. And so when it came to my business, I swear for the first seven months of it, I just 100% ignored the whole financial piece of it, the whole financial piece of it, the whole money thing just makes me very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. However, I mean, I've had to to work with some of this because like, it, it, you need money to run a business. <laughs> you need to be aware of where your money is, where it's coming from, and where it's going, if that business is going to be sustainable. So um, it's it's probably the biggest thing that I struggle with inside my business now. Yeah. And, and if that money is then going to make it out of the business and into your bank account mm-hmm. to pay you. Yeah. And, you know, I have a pretty good, I, I have no intentions of quitting medicine, um, at least not anytime soon, but what I want my business to do is to be able to retire my husband from his job. He has supported me through medical school residency. You know, it's, it's been all about my career for a very long time now, and he's not super fulfilled in his. So I would like to give him the freedom to go and explore, you know, whatever he's passionate about. And like, that's really important to me. So, you know, more than paying myself, I want to be able to retire him. So like, that's a pretty big motivator for me, but. I know you and I are going to have a conversation about that this year, and then we're going to plan it out. And then you're going to come back on the podcast and you're going to tell people exactly like how important it is to do that work because every time a woman says to me, they want to retire their husband. I'm like, there are a handful of things that we need great. And there are a handful of things that we need to talk about that are going to cost money. (laughs) And that money has to come from somewhere, which means you need to get comfortable charging and making money and loving money and having it come in because it's not going to be dirty it's yeah. going to allow your husband to go and find his passions. <laughs> well, I will take any help you can give me on that. Yep. We're going to reverse engineer <laughs> that whole thing for you. And then we're going to talk about it again. 
I appreciate that that those have been your experiences with money. Um, I talk about my experiences with money a lot on the podcast. I have a couple of podcast episodes dedicated to it. We all have unique uh, lived experiences that that contribute to how we talk about money. There's a huge intersection in, in money and the, all the different intersections of you know race and and gender and sexual orientation and gender identity and class and geography and religion. It's like all there when it comes to money, which is why I have become comfortable, which has been really hard for me, but I've made myself very comfortable saying I love money. And I say it because people then listen to this podcast and they say, I literally need to listen to you say, I love money over and over and over again. Uh, see, when I hear you say that, I feel so tense. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel good to hear you say that? <laughs> I have work to do <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I get it. It's it's been my own challenge and my own growth around that, for sure. All right, well, you know, so there's I'm hearing right. We we get that there's the anxieties around money. How has Profit First maybe helped you navigate those anxieties? Well, I think the first thing was it forced me to confront it, right? So I I think that was actually the biggest thing. So, you know, I I read the book, I watched your videos, and then I waited for five months to go to the bank. Um, Of course. Because, you know, like even just going to the bank is Mm -hmm. stressful. Thing, you know, for me to do. Me um, then, right. And then I go to the bank and I ask for these accounts and, you know, nobody knows what profit first is at my bank. And now I have to explain why I want all this. And then, you know, they look at my accounts and of course I'm embarrassed because there's no money in there because <laughs> it comes in and then it goes right out. Right. And, and so I think the biggest benefit was I had to actually overcome all of my fears to just go to the bank and get those accounts set up. And then I, you know, I do my allocations twice per month, which means I have to actually go into my bank account and see what's happening and, you know, do the math. And it, it's really been, um, Again, it's structure. Like it forces me to go in and look um, at my finances, which is, it sounds like a little thing, but it's a huge deal for me to actually just be doing that. Um, And then I have goals, like I have financial goals. So if I want to meet those, I I, like, I need a strategy and I need to, I need to at least face this. Right. So I think again, like and profit first has just been, you know, providing the structure for that. Yeah. And we acknowledge all of that inside the Bold Profit Academy. We acknowledge mm-hmm. that opening bank accounts are going to be the hardest thing. We acknowledge that, you know, everybody implements this at a different pace, that we expect there to be discomfort and self-protection and weirdness around like, what do I say to the banker? How do I talk to my accountant? And we kind of give some scripts for that in there as well. Because even the book Profit First makes a lot of assumptions about where we are with our both our business acumen and our financial literacy. Mm-hmm. And so we really try and hit those pieces that need to be addressed that are pre-profit first. Yeah. But what it's done is it's like it's there. The system is there inside my business. And so as I grow and my business grows, it's going to be great. It's going to be organized and I'm going to feel much better about it. So I'm certainly glad that I've taken all of the steps now um, early in the business. And I'm, I definitely recognize how important it is for me to work on my own, you know, issues and mindset um, around money. So I think, I think this just forces me to do that. Yeah. And, and what made you decide to join the Bull Profit Academy plus? Oh, well, that's, that's a good question. So I, love support and accountability. It helps me. It helps me stay on track. I discovered in the first year of my business that it's a lonely place starting mm-hmm. a business, mm-hmm. um, especially if you have you know no one in your circle who, who knows what's going on. It's like all of your stuff comes up for you yes, it does. Right? <laughs> when you're starting a business. And I, I need women around me um, who understands what that's 
what that feels like. And so I chose, I was going to, I promised myself I would invest in one program only um, for 2022. And your program just, you know, checked all the boxes. I get, um, I, I love the way that you teach. I love the structure that's inside the program. I feel like um, the other women in the program are, they emulate what, what I want to do, who I want to be, where I want to go. So, I mean, it was, it was an obvious, like I had made the decision before I even got on the call with you that, um, but this was the direction I was going to go. So <laughs> well, I'm honored. I'm honored. And I'm excited. I'm excited to have you. Um, there are two things that I want to ask you about that I want to cover as kind of like, let's leave the audience with this thing, this sure. takeaway. The first thing is the objection that I get the most is how much time is this going to take? And I think this is a really tricky objection because a couple of reasons. One, in the Bull Profit Academy, we're only giving you the things you actually need to work on in your business. Would you say that's fair? 100%. Yeah. Right? Like we're touching lead generation. We're touching how to sell. We're touching, you know, how you can position your content for selling. We're teaching you about creating your offers. We're teaching you about money. And those are the things that, Honestly, every year, every month, every quarter, every year, you need to be addressing in your business. So there is, to my, in my opinion, no wasted time in the Bold Profit Academy. You have to be doing that anyway. We're just teaching you how to and guiding you and how to do it better. But the second piece of that is funny to me because what is time? <laughs> like time is going to pass anyway whether you make the decision and take the action or not. However, I still get that this is a tricky thing for folks. You are an ER doctor working a night shift, running a business. How are you doing it time-wise? Oh gosh. So I, I may have all sorts of issues around money. I have no issues with time. I firmly believe that I have enough time to do what I need to do. Okay. Right. And I am not just an ER doc and a business owner. I am also the chief of my department in the hospital. I'm also working on a master's degree. I'm also working towards my certification in obesity medicine. I have a family. I have my own personal goals. So my life is gloriously full. Right. Right. But what it means is I have to be um, very intentional um, and very deliberate with my time. So I practice time blocking. I do all of the things, but, you know, I I think a couple of my tricks are one is I identify every morning, the one thing that I have to do today. One thing, one thing. And, and I, I've said this to you before, and I don't know who said it originally, but I trust the dominoes will fall. So I do my one thing um, every day and I do it first thing for anything else. So if I have a a 6am shift in the hospital, I still get up early enough to do my one thing before I get in the car and drive to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think, you know, because I do have just a finite time to work on my business, I don't mess around. I make decisions, right? I make decisions. I, I no take messy, imperfect action. If it's the wrong decision, if it's the wrong action, fine. I learn from it. I move on. I do it differently um, the next time. But I just waste, I waste no time waffling. I make my decisions and I move on. And I think, I think if I didn't have all of these things going on in my life, that's exactly what I would do is I would waffle and stew and analyze to death and never move forward. So I think, I think if you can switch your perspective of thinking like, I don't have time, there's too much going on to like finding a way to believe that there's enough time to get everything done. You start to prioritize things differently and you, you don't waste time uh, deliberating and on the hamster wheel and, and all of that stuff. I took a note on yesterday's hot seat call in the Bold Profit Academy because you said something that I've been thinking about that I know is true. And sometimes I refrain from saying things because even you have said this to me. You told me that it was hard to take in some of what I talk about because it's so different. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that what you said that? Yep. Yep. Because it wasn't confirming what you were hearing in all these other programs. Correct. And, 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 and it's like, 
But here's the thing. It's like, I know in myself that when I'm starting to have like a very physical reaction, when somebody says something, it's because I really, really need to hear it. And it's like, that's, I forget. We were on a call very recently and, you know, you, I, I think it was, I think you were talking to somebody else about doing consult calls. And in my head, I'm going like, hey, yeah, I'm way beyond, you know, consult calls. And I was getting triggered more and more during that conversation you were having with somebody else. And after the call, Tara, that's when I realized that I was operating as if my business were way further ahead than where it really is. And that I actually need to go back to offering and doing um, consult calls on a regular basis. And, you know, so I know when you say something that's rubbing me, it's because <laughs> I, it's a truth I need to hear. I love money, Michelle. <laughs> there it is. That's a perfect example. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said that yesterday and you said, you know, that you realized that you were operating from from further ahead than you were. And I mean, like, I'm on year eight of my business and I still, I'm, I please get on a call with me. Please book a call. I'm lovely to talk to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like let's, let's chat, let's chat this through. Let's help you figure out what you need, what you don't need, what direction might be better for you to go in. Let's help you stop the waffling. Waffles are for breakfast, not for business. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Right. (laughs) That needs to go somewhere. (laughs) I'm putting that on a t-shirt. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think, but that's how professionals and experts sell high quality programs for a premium price is there's a consultative selling experience that needs to happen. And when we do that, it's actually very empathetic. And, you know, I'm watching people in the online space really push ditching sales calls. Listen, not everybody needs a sales call to buy. And I, I, I appreciate that. And you can absolutely join my program without booking a call with me. However, I also want to honor the fact that people might need to talk to me, mm-hmm. even just for 15 minutes. And we create our content in a way that really walks people through the majority of the sales process so that when they do get on a call, it really is just a, a check-in, you know, making yeah. sure that kind of thing. And they close a lot faster. So I think what the objection is, is I don't want to be stuck on a 90 minute consult call, quote unquote, wasting my time. And you shouldn't, that's not what I'm promoting. Cause mm-hmm. that's the other thing that people teach is like coaching on the call, teaching on the call. And, and that doesn't work either, but to get in and out on a call in, in 30, 30 minutes on average, 40 minutes and learn something about the person, right? There's a lot of data you can get. I say that all the time. There's a lot of data that you can collect about your, your ideal client and, and, and things like that. And the challenges that they're having and really be able to empathize and be compassionate. Yeah. And it's also a prime example of the need to tune out the noise because that's exactly why I stopped doing console calls was because of all of the voices out there in the online space saying that if you want to scale, if you want to grow, you can't, you can't be doing console calls. And like the irony of all of this is I asked, I, I had a meeting, a little fireside chat with all of the people in my program now. And I asked, why did you sign up with me? I want to hear it. And every single person alluded to having a conversation with me at some point of time and realizing fairly quickly that they, that I'm the person they wanted to work with. And so with this knowledge and, you know, this coming right from the mouths of my clients, I still was opposed to doing consult calls because of all of the noise out there. So, you know, as soon as you kind of triggered this in me, Tara, and I accepted this, like it feels, it feels light and expansive and right for me to be doing the the consult calls again. So (laughs) I love it when you challenge me. That's what I'm here for. I really love to be the challenger. Oh, I know you do. Raising the bar. We're just going to raise the bar (laughs) on on what's going on here. So listen, I think that there were some really great takeaways here, specifically around make the decision. That saves time. Like just making the decision. 
Waffles are for breakfast, not for business. I'm really going to put that on a t-shirt. I love the don't like, don't think you're further along, right? Especially in the online space, we're shortening timeframes in a way that are not realistic. You know, and I always say this, I'm like, you know, there's businesses that I work with that have been in business for 30 years a long time. Imagine being in business for 30 years. So even me being in business in this business for eight years, you know, I'm, I'm getting on in my years of business, but it's, it's a third of what maybe some of these other businesses have been around for. So really give yourself when you're in that zero to five year space of, of starting a business, really give yourself some grace and I don't know. I think we should always approach things like a beginner with a beginner's mind. I think that's another Mm -hmm. thing that you really shared that like you could take away from Michelle is just her curiosity and her being an agile learner, really being willing to to learn and also being motivated by the challenge you said. Mm -hmm. That's something my dad says to me all the time about being a business owner is that he's a business owner because he likes to solve problems. (laughs) Right. I I think that's why I like being a business owner as well. Right. Yeah. I I love that coaching because I'm passionate about what I coach about, but I love my business because I love solving problems. Oh my God. Give me a good problem. Uh, There are times I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like, I've had a dream about a woman's issue or something that's in the bold profit Academy. And I was like, Oh, oh, like that's what she can, that's what she can do. Like it's, I feel so creepy. I'm like, how to dream about you last night. But I thought about this. <laughs> I, I, love do, I love solving problems. <laughs> Any other things that you want to share with the audience about like a tip or anything from the bold profit Academy or anything like that before we, we wrap up? Oh, wow. Um, I, I think you just have to do it, right? It's, it's, I think as business owners, we, we like to spend a lot of time reading and learning and watching what others are doing and then never doing it ourselves. And that's one thing I love about the Bold Profit Academy is that, you know, we, we work through these. It's, it's not about getting on a call with you and being talked to or taught, right? It's about solving problems, getting the work done and moving forward. So it's just never helpful to, to be constantly in research mode. You just have to do. Yeah. You have to, that's, do. You that's you to ask the questions too, which I think is hard yeah. for folks. Now, yeah, sure. Michelle, tell people where they can find you in the event that we have a woman listening who wants to be in your audience and wants to be supported by you. Sure. Um, you can head on over to my website, um, which is waysahealth.com, uh, W-A-Y-Z-A health.com. You can read all about why I call my business that there. Um, it's an amazing story. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Ways of Health as well. And I also host the Mindful Weight Loss with Michelle Tubman MD podcast, which you can find anywhere you stream your podcasts. Thank you so much for coming on, Michelle, and sharing your journey with us. Thanks for having me. It was fun. If you found this podcast valuable, help us develop more bold leaders in the world by sharing this episode with your friends, colleagues, and other bold leaders. Also, if you haven't done so already, please leave a review. I consider reviews like podcast currency, and it's the one thing you can do to help us out here at the Bold Leadership Revolution HQ. We would be so grateful for it. Special thanks goes to Stacey Harris from Uncommonly More, who is the producer and editor of this podcast. Go check them out for all your digital marketing and content creation needs. Be sure to tune into the next episode to help you embrace your ambition and leave the grind behind.